obstacle to an opportunity, a barrier to a bridge. That is the power of perspective. Alfred Nobel was a Swedish chemist, engineer, and inventor. Born in 1833, by 1888, he had amassed a vast fortune for more than 300 different inventions, the most famous of these being dynamite. Nobel also owned a company that sold weapons to war machines around the globe. The same year, tragedy struck when Nobel's brother died. Shortly after, Nobel was surprised to read his own obituary in a Swedish newspaper. The newspaper had been misinformed and it thought Nobel had died, not his brother. This obituary was years premature, written about a man still very much alive. This put Alfred Nobel in a very unique position. He was able to understand the mark he would leave when he was gone, what he would be remembered for, all while still alive. What he read in his own obituary shocked him. The newspaper described him as the merchant of death, describing his work and impact as being the man who made it possible to kill and destroy faster than anyone else to have ever existed, and to make a profit off of the suffering of thousands. Alfred Nobel saw what he would leave behind, death, greed, and destruction. Now, Nobel knew he needed to change his legacy, and when he died, to widespread astonishment, he left his entire fortune to creating a system of awards to be given to those who created the greatest benefit for mankind in the areas of physics, chemistry, medicine, literature, and peace. The Nobel Prizes, as we know them today, constitute one of the most impressive awards this world has to offer and have been given to humanitarians, statesmen, scientists, and peacemakers. From the merchant of death to a promoter of peace and prosperity, Alfred Nobel had changed his legacy forever. I guess you could say Alfred Nobel's brother taught him something about perspective, about how tragedy can be reversed, or you can change the negative facets of your life through incredible self-preservation. I also have a brother that taught me something about perspective. His name is Colin. He's my best friend. And unfortunately, Colin's lesson happened in March of 2012 when he died of a heroin overdose in the bathroom of our home. When I lost a brother, words cannot describe the pain and grief I felt as an 11-year-old. It's an unnatural fear, a complete loss of all words and hope. Big brothers are supposed to teach you how to mess with your sisters or play video games or maybe ask a girl out for the first time. My brother taught me how to struggle, overcome, and thrive in an environment of grief. But most importantly, he taught me about perspective knowing that when I wake up, nothing I can do that day will change the way it is. When I go downstairs, hoping that he'll be there at the kitchen table, hoping that it was all a dream, when it's not. In reality, my life has become a nightmare. When I lost my best friend, I lost every shred of hope and goodness I had in this world. Yet now I've come to realize the power of perspective. I come from a very tight-knit family. We support each other and maybe even knock each other down a few pegs when we need it. There's five kids, seven busy schedules, one dog, and zero sanity. My parents have always encouraged us to become as involved as possible. And one way for me to do this was to join a scout troop. My fellow scouts and I can attest to the program's ability to provide with us life lessons and experiences that we will take for a lifetime. One scout in particular has carved a special notch into my life. Let's call him John. Now, John is not like other scouts. John was born with several mental and learning challenges that make it incredibly difficult for him to complete daily tasks. Complex sentences and critical thinking are all things he struggles with. Yet last year, John would say something to me that would change my life forever. The troop was on a campout, and we were in a large field bordered by tall trees with a clear blue sky overhead. Like a painting, John stood against this picturesque background. As the other scouts left, John remained and stared intently at the ground. He bent down and picked a dandelion off the ground and held the small golden flower in his hand. And then he turned to me and he said, Corey, take time to look at the dandelions in your life because they may change it. I was shocked. I never expected to be so intuitive by making such an impactful statement or to provide for me advice I will take with me forever. John's statement only reaffirmed my belief in the power of perspective, because John sees the world not through someone who constantly faces adversity, but through the eyes of someone who sees hope.
That is the power of perspective. However, I've also come to realize that sometimes the positive side of life does not show itself until long after the battles have been fought. Blind Willie Johnson was born in 1897 in a small town in Texas. His family lived a modest and humble farmer's life. However, growing up in the Jim Crow South meant that Blind Willie Johnson had challenge after challenge placed in front of him from a very young age. At the age of five, his father gave him his first guitar and his love of music never stopped. However, these times of musical expression and childhood memories would not last. Johnson's home situation was volatile, to say the least. And in one particularly violent argument, Johnson's mother threw lie into his face, permanently blinding him. No longer able to see, Johnson continued to use music as his only form of income, moving from small town to small town, performing for any amount of money he could be given. In 1945, Johnson's story takes another tragic turn when the house he was living in burned to the ground. Having no money to buy or rent a new home, Johnson was forced to live in the wreckage of the abandoned building. Eventually, exposure to the elements killed Blind Willie Johnson. This story ends in loss. It's a story about a man who, through no fault of his own, was stripped of almost every joy in his life except his beloved music. Or is it? Because right now, as we speak, the Voyager spacecraft is traveling at 39,000 miles per hour on the very outer limits of our solar system. And upon this spacecraft is a golden record. The team of researchers that developed the record hope that upon successful use of the record, any living thing somewhere in the universe would hear all they needed to hear to understand the lives of the people of Earth. Upon this record is music from Bach, Mozart, and Blind Willie Johnson. Johnson's song, Dark Was the Night and Cold Was the Ground, was included because according to Carl Sagan, it concerns a situation he faced many times in his life. Nightfall, with no place to sleep. And since humans appeared on this earth, the shroud of night has yet to fall or touch a man or woman in the same plight. Johnson's life may have been filled with sadness and neglect, but his memory lives on as a messenger of peace for all of mankind. But what do John and blind Willie Johnson have to do with my brother? Well, immediately after Colin's death, I began to think, why? Why me? I'm only 11. I was left destroyed, heartbroken, and helpless. And then I began to think, it doesn't have to be this way. I understood that stories like mine happen across the United States to kids just like me every single day. And I knew I could be a candle in a dark room and do something to stop stories like mine from happening making sure that kids in my community could go back to their brother, sister, friend, or parent. Through a group I am a part of, Lake Erie Youth Road Crew, a group of youth against drugs and underage drinking, I began speaking at schools. I enjoyed sharing my story and meeting kids from across my area. I am able to do all of this through the unconditional and unwavering support of my mother, whose own voice in the community has only grown stronger over these years as her hard work and dedication pays off. Yet I knew I could do more. This past year, through the help of my family and dozens of volunteers, I was able to complete a mobile drug educational platform funded completely by grants and donations. The project is a trailer that is set up like a mock teen bedroom that provides parents the information and preventative steps they need to take to save their own son or daughter before it's too late. The project has reached headlines across the nation, appearing in newspapers, online sites, and magazines. Its reach continues to grow every single day, and it has the potential to impact millions of lives. In retrospect, it wasn't easy. I was faced with loss, but I chose to do something about it. I didn't choose to lose my brother, but I did choose to improve my community through my own story of loss. Where some, some see loss and devastation, you can find hope. The crises and personal burdens we face are our own boulders we must roll up a mountain day by day. They break us down emotionally, physically, and mentally. Yet every single day, you have the opportunity to wake up and find some sort of good in the world, to use your burden to improve the lives of others. Returning to John's dandelion as an example. A dandelion, it's a weed. It's a tough, stubborn plant that is difficult to remove, a pest. And while so many people across the United States spend hundreds of dollars to remove dandelions from their yards, it was quite the opposite for my grandfather nearly 80 years ago. Growing up during the Great Depression, food was scarce, and his siblings would scrounge for it anywhere they could. A dandelion that is today a pest 
was then a precious commodity, a plant that's leaves could stave off hunger for another night. Do you see how powerful perspective can become? On one hand, an item is nothing but negatives, and on the other, the same item is life-saving and a symbol of hope. An obstacle to an opportunity, a barrier to a bridge, that is the power of perspective. You're going to run into bumps in the road, turns you didn't see coming, and tragedy that strikes out of nowhere. It's inevitable. It's a part of life. However, what is not inevitable is how you react to such happenings. Alfred Nobel saw his awful legacy and changed it. John can't keep up with other scouts, but he can impart lifelong wisdom. Blind Willie Johnson's dedication to his music, not to his obstacles, entombs him forever as a messenger of peace. I lost a brother, but have been able to touch the lives of thousands because of it. And when I tell you these stories of empowerment and determination, I'm not asking you to believe in my own ability to bring about change. I'm asking you to believe in yours. So the next time it feels like the entire world is against you, beating you, pushing you down, telling you to move, you plant your feet like a tree, look the world in the eye, and say, no, you move. Thank you. Thank you.